My name is Claudia Castroluna, and I am Washington State's Poet Laureate. And my project is titled One River, Many Voices. And it is a journey through the length of the Columbia River as it traverses the state of Washington from when it enters at the Canadian border um, all the way down to the gorge, which is, is divides um, Oregon and Washington territories to the mouth of the river. Um, there'll be eight different locations uh, at which I will stop and hold poetry convenings, readings, poetry writing workshops at schools and in the community, and just a celebration of words and poetry and, and community. And I'm looking forward to the whole thing. Uh, Janetta Calhoun Mish, Oklahoma State Poet Laureate. My project is to take poetry into rural, underserved, high poverty schools in my home state. I'm Grace Cavalieri, Poet Laureate of Maryland, and I have two projects. One is that I am podcasting all of the Maryland poets, and there are a lot of them, and I've done several so far. We are creating a Maryland State Arts Council website just for these Maryland poets. I have an existing radio program called The Poet and the Poem, and it happens that in that archive I have about 85 Maryland poets already, so we will just swing them over and put them on the website. So this is something that's going to be taking four years, I believe, to complete. My second project is a passionate one because I believe there are so many teens that are committing suicide now. The rate is great. I mean, it's almost up to what vets are committing. So um, that is my mission. I am doing teen workshops in every one of the 34 counties in Maryland. And it is a chance for young people to go inward for the first time. Sometimes they can go their whole lives and be expected to go outward. And they're tuned in with wires that go out from them. But they don't have the chance to have an interior life and to find out that everything they need is really within. So that is my job. We call it poetry, but it's really finding out who they are. And it is a big fact, even if a, a teen comes just for the art of writing, teens want to be seen and they want to be heard. They're an endangered species, and I believe they need elders more than ever before. My name is Molly Fisk. I was the inaugural Poet Laureate for Nevada County, California from 217 to 219. Um, my project as a Poet Laureate Fellow is called California Fire and Water. And it's three parts. It's sending teachers into schools all over the state, 35 teachers doing five-week sessions to help kids write about the cri climate crisis fire especially wildfire, flooding, smoke, mudslides, all that stuff. We're taking kid poems, and I've also got a call out for adults to write poems about these things. We're putting together an anthology, and then we will read in 20 different readings around the state from the anthology during National Poetry Month, April of 2020. And then all the books will go to public libraries. I'm Jackie Shelton Green. I'm the Poet Laureate of North Carolina. And I'm happy to launch Literary Changemakers, which will engage young social activists, literary changemakers from across the state of North Carolina. We'll be collaborating with Black Space, Kid Ethnic, and Word on the Street, which are amazing community-based organizations that are doing amazing literary projects with teen populations in the areas of podcast, uh, videotaping, amazing documentary poetry, projects, and of course, spoken word. I'm Fred Joyner, the Poet Laureate of the town of Carborough, North Carolina. My project centers around making and holding space um, for, people, for people that are in transition, um, for homeless people, and also for making space for artists so that they can live and work in the communities that they choose and not be moved out by market forces or by other forms of displacement. My name is Ed Madden. I'm the Poet Laureate of the City of Columbia, South Carolina. 
And my civic project is to put together an interactive digital map of the city that includes audio, video, and text versions of poems and stories that we've developed over the past few years. Um, the theme of a lot of my work has been the story of the city. So people have written stories and histories um, and personal anecdotes about places they live and places they know in the city. And we really want to put all that work together on a digital map so that other people can experience the city in that way. I'm Paisley Ragdahl. I'm Utah State Poet Laureate, and I am working on a website called Mapping Literary Utah, which is a web archive of the poets and writers that have lived in Utah or have shaped Utah's cultural history. Uh, Kim Shuck, 7th Poet Laureate of San Francisco. Um, my National Laureate project is called The Fire Thieves, and uh, what it is is every month I'm putting a reading together uh, two groups made up of one elder, a proper elder over 65, and one youth, a proper youth, no older than 22. And they pick a headliner from the San Francisco Bay Area to read with. Um, they fantasize about where a good place would be to read. I'm preferring not libraries or bookstores because we can always get libraries and bookstores, but I like alternative spaces. Um, and we do a workshop to align the poetry a little bit beforehand. And um, they organize as much of it as they feel comfortable using my name and my reputation as a scaffolding. And I just support them. And everybody's getting paid a real check. My name's Adrian Matika, and I'm the Poet Laureate of the state of Indiana. My project is called Inverse. It's an archive of poetry and stories from the citizens of the state of Indiana. Um, we're collecting them currently, but also uh, archiving work that's been done in the last 200 years of, of Hoosier poetry, including Mari Evans and Etheridge Knight and even James Whitcomb Riley. Raquel Sáez Rivera, Poet Laureate of Philadelphia. Home on Our Back is a bi-city collaboration with Boston's Poet Laureate, Portia Oliawala. Together with Portia, we've invited six poets to read both in Boston and Philadelphia and explore the idea of migration as something that goes beyond citizenship. Migration from south to north to reach freedom, migration from Puerto Rico to the United States, and migration that does include the migration of undocumented peoples. The reason why we are doing this is because we want to think of these cities not as cities that are in conflict with each other because of regional differences, but rather cities that have often included and incorporated different types of migration and which these poets and communities have been formed through bonds of solidarity that go beyond region and even nation. My name is T.C. Tolbert and I'm the Poet Laureate of Tucson, Arizona. My project is uplifting the voices of trans, non-binary, and queer poets across Tucson. Um, and I'll be doing that through poetry workshops specifically highlighting the work of trans, non-binary, and queer poets across the world, and then teaching um, trans, non-binary, and queer poets in Tucson how to write and create their own work. Then we'll record those, we'll audio record those poems and distribute them by sound installations in bathrooms across the city. And then also doing a hotline where you can call and hear recordings of the poem. So, you know, it'll say something like press one for a poem about resilience, press two for, you know, a poem about love. So um, we'll be getting the poems out in multiple intimate but public spaces.